So when the Sony ZV-1 was released last year, it was hailed by many as the ultimate vlogging camera. This was no doubt helped by Sony's marketing team, who very much marketed it as a vlogging camera. And you know, I, I can see why. They gave it a lot of features that vloggers like. They gave us the flip out screen. They gave us a uh, decent built-in microphone. And of course, most importantly for a lot of people, it's pocket-sized. This little guy can easily fit in your pocket. Unlike a larger setup like this, and now you're hearing the Sony audio, by the way, and you're also seeing the Canon 90D, which is my primary vlogging camera at the moment. So obviously the Sony is a lot smaller than this. It's also cheaper than this. And you know, it's more comfortable if you're carrying it around all day, like this starts to become an issue especially if you got a big shotgun mic and you got a tripod underneath. This can be heavy. Whereas this, I mean, you're almost, you're almost gonna forget you have it with you. This is just like carrying your phone, you know? And yet, all of that aside, for a few reasons, the Sony ZV-1 is not a perfect vlogging camera and it's not gonna be replacing my DSLR from Canon as my main filmmaking camera. Okay, okay, first of all, let me tell you the positives before I get to all the bad stuff. To be honest, one of the major reasons I bought this is because in certain situations, having a smaller camera is very advantageous. Let's say you're traveling to somewhere where there could be security issues, like some countries aren't as safe as the places you might live. Uh, it helps to have something pocket-sized. You know, you don't need to worry about being out after dark if someone's gonna try and steal your camera or getting like too much attention in some places you don't wanna get attention. Depending on the kind of videos you wanna make, like some people like filming in supermarkets and stuff to show what the food looks like in different countries. Uh, and some places the security guards will tell you you can't film with those big cameras because it'll get too much attention. But once you have something like this, you just hold it, it just looks like a phone. Unless someone's close to you, they don't even, they don't even notice this thing. I can like practically cover this with my hand. So uh, it's very inconspicuous if that's the kind of filmmaker you want to be. It's very easy to get the shots with this. Once you get a big setup like this, you know, you throw a Joby tripod underneath and you throw a little uh, Rode video mic on top and suddenly you look like a filmmaker and suddenly you're gonna get more attention for better or for worse. Audio's great. Built-in audio straight out of this camera's great. No complaints there. Low light capabilities are amazing. In fact, if I'm filming after dark, I probably prefer this to my Canon. When it's zoomed all the way out, it can go down to f1.8. It's got a very handy ND filter, which can allow you to use that depth of field even when it's daytime. You get that nice blurry background. Autofocus, great. No complaints about the Sony autofocus. Little red record light on the front, that's also great. And you know, when I first saw how high quality the footage out of this was, I thought, hmm, maybe this could replace my big camera. Wouldn't that be nice to go through airports without worrying about all the added weight of my camera with my three lenses and my tripod and all that stuff? Wouldn't it be nice to just have like a pocket size setup? But it's just not quite there. There's a few things I really miss about this bigger setup. This is the main issue I got with it, okay? You ready for this? This is me. Both my arms are extended. Both of my arms are trying to keep this camera steady. Uh, right now I'm on the Canon, the Canon 90D. I'm using the Canon's built-in stabilization. And now here's the Sony. And hopefully I'm able to replicate which I ha the results I had last time I tried this when it just turned out that the Sony was like significantly shakier. Uh, I'm gonna switch back Try to give you a little side-by-side. -side. Not sure which camera to look at, but here's my side-by-side. -side. <laughs> Equal distances away. I'll stretch out fully, see how that looks. Probably getting weird looks from people holding both my cameras, but that's all good. Gotta do it for the fine folks on YouTube. And based on my experience using this camera, is it is significantly shakier. Uh, you can try to use the built-in stabilization, but it just doesn't do enough. And the reason it doesn't do enough is 
I think, because the camera is so small and light. And this isn't an ad for Canon or anything like that. You could probably get a Sony A, what is it, A6600 and get similar results. I heard the Fuji X-T4 is a beast with the stabilization. Um, what else? Nikon, yeah, Nikon's not that good. But I'm getting sidetracked here. The point is, as a solo travel vlogger, you need certain things out of your camera. You need to know that it's gonna work when you need it to work. Which brings me to another point, which I haven't even mentioned yet. The batteries on this camera are absolute trash. <laughs> This, this battery is probably halfway done just from the little test I've done. I think the way I film is very intensive on these two because I take a lot of short shots. Like I'm, I take my camera out, turn it on, film for 10 seconds, put it away. A minute later, I film for 10 seconds. A minute later, like I'm constantly getting like quick B-roll shots and I feel like turning it on and off a lot just drains the battery. But my Canons, which to be fair, have a significantly larger battery uh, can last, as you would expect, three to four times longer than one of these. Like, no exaggeration. Uh, maybe three times longer. I shouldn't say four times. Maybe three times longer. But the point is, one of those Canon camera batteries can usually last a whole day of shooting. I'll usually have one backup in my bag, and then that's like, I never need to go past those two. Whereas with Sony, I always have three backups. In fact, I brought them with me right now just in case I killed this on the test. Hmm, actually, no, I didn't. <laughs> I must have forgot them at home. Um, <laughs> I'll get a little B-roll shot to show you what they look like. Uh, and there's a link in the description if you wanna buy the three pack I bought, which is pretty affordable. So it's not the price that's an issue, it's just the fact that, like today, I forgot them. I, I actually, <laughs> I was intending to bring those with me for this video, but I didn't. And it's just one extra thing you always need to have with you. So if the idea of this is it's like a portable and like makes your life easy, it doesn't make your life easy when you constantly need to worry about battery life. It doesn't make your life easy when you constantly need to worry, is my shot gonna be too shaky to use? Like, should I shoot that again? And that might seem like a small issue. And maybe if you're someone who films in a studio, like a lot of camera viewers do, it's not a big deal. But for someone who's making travel videos like myself and always on the move, it's a huge deal. That's the biggest thing that keeps me on these bigger camera setups. All right, so it pains me a bit to show you this clip because this is a video that I never published. This is something I took uh, soon after buying the Sony ZV-1. I was taking a hike with some new friends and we had a great day. It was, you know, it would have been great content, but as I reviewed the footage, it was just too shaky. I felt like it wasn't up to the standards of my channel, so I never published it. The day was lost. Now compare this to this footage here, filmed in 2016 with my Canon 70D. Is it perfectly stable? No. You can see some shakes. But this video has been viewed over 70,000 times, and I have no complaints in the comments about shakiness. It's much more usable, in my opinion, than the ZV-1 as you can clearly see by the side-by-side. -side. Am I wrong? Let me know if I'm wrong. If the footage looks fine out of both cameras, it would make my life easier. I could sell my big camera and my big lenses and downsize and like, yeah, stop paying uh, extra fees because my camera bag weighs too much when I'm traveling internationally and stuff like that. Yeah, I haven't even talked about this yet. This screen. So it's a touch screen in terms of focus. See, I'm focused on my backpack, right? Focus on the grass, focus over there. So I can change that, but none of these features can be changed. Um, look at this. So I just press the FN button, which brings up your different features. So I want to turn down the audio. Oh, I can't do that because it's not actually a touch screen. So I need to go to this dial here. Another thing is weather sealing. If I didn't have the mic on top, I would trust this Canon in the rain. In fact, I've used it with shotgun mics in the rain. 
I'm not necessarily recommending that. I don't want to break your microphone or anything, but I've just used this camera in rain. I've used it in snow. Canon bodies are very durable. I've dropped it a few times, unfortunately, and it just survives. Those little bodies, like I said, you know, they're good, but you need to baby them a little bit more. Good camera, yes. Do I regret buying it? No. But will this replace my larger camera and is this the ultimate vlogging camera? In my opinion, no it isn't. I don't know, maybe I fell for a bit of the marketing hype when I bought this. Maybe I thought this would solve all my problems because I'd seen so many other reviewers tell me it was perfect. But at the end of the day, nothing can replace your own educated opinion and you know, taking the time to test and to come to your own conclusions. As always, I'm Dan. Hope that was helpful. I'll see you next time.